So it's been four months since the Blackmagic design team announced DaVinci Resolve version 20. We've had a few dot releases since, but today is an important day because 20.1 is officially out. It's got loads of new features across all the pages. I'm gonna install it now. I normally install at a 0.1 release. And I'm gonna really quickly just show you some of the new features in the color page. Now I've only had this running for about two or three hours, so I'm not gonna go in too much depth, but let's go and take a look. So the main new features of 20.1 in the color page can be found up here in the effects tab. Now let's start with this one, light rays. Now this is not a new effect, this has been here for ages, and but it has got a new element in it, which makes it look really smart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set up this light ray so it's coming out of this window. So let's just change that to be angle. Let's just bring that over there, something like that. I'm gonna just soften it off a little bit in there, something like that, just for speed. And the other thing I need to check is in here, you can see that there's actually a light ray coming off this lamp, which I don't want to happen. I just want it to come out the window. So let's go to our power windows. Let's just very quickly just draw around that so we can eliminate it. Obviously I need to invert that window to make that effective. I always just put a little bit of softness on my windows anyway, something like that. Okay, so if I press Shift and Z, we get back to there. Let me take the power window off so you can see what's going on. Right, so we've got our light ray set up. Now the new addition in here is down here and it's called Atmosphere. Now this is fantastic because what this is doing, if I press Add Atmosphere, it's giving us particles. So as we play through, that's very subtle now. I'm gonna have to increase this a bit. In fact, if I take the softness off just for this, you might be able to see it a bit better. And I'm gonna to have to strengthen that up. Let's just bring these up. And you see now that this actually animates. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can just see that moving in there. Let me, let me really exaggerate it so you can see what's going on. That looks really nice. We're getting a really convincing light ray coming out of there now. This is also available in the Glow. So let me reset that and go to Glow. I love using Glow. I use Glow a lot. I probably use it more than I should actually. Oh, in fact, you can add a secondary Glow now. So I need to have a play with that and work out exactly how that's gonna help me. Um, like I said, I've only been playing on this for a few hours, but in here, you've got exactly those same Add Atmosphere tools. So really convincing Glows, love that. Next new addition, really quickly, if I go into here, is the Face Refine tool. Now the Face Refinement tool had a really great update in version 20 already, but they've added something else. Now what I'm gonna do is, let's just detect her face, let's just do a quick track of that. Like I said, this shot's already graded and color managed and I've rendered it out, so we can do this really quickly for you. And uh, we'll just get that Face Refine going. Much more accurate, remember in, since version 20, you can actually keyframe these now if it goes off. I've done a whole episode on how to do that. Right, so once that's done, let's take that overlay off. And what I'm gonna do, just to show you the new feature, if I go to smoothing here, let's zoom in on her face. And I'm gonna use my middle mouse just to move that around. And what we're gonna do is add a little bit of smoothing to her face. I'm gonna exaggerate it slightly. I would never go that strong on that. But what we've now got in here is grain. So we can actually put some texture back in. So again, another sort of texture tool for us to give us a more convincing smoothing there of the face refine. So just add that in. Let me go extreme so you can see what's going on. And there you can see the grain. Okay, let me take that on and off, on and off. So that is fantastic. I use it a bit more subtle than that, obviously. Okay, so moving on to another shot. What I wanna show you now is a new effect. It's called Color Tone Diffuser. This is an area test chart. Let's grab this new effect, Color Tone Diffuser. And what this is doing is allowing us to control the amount of diffusion and its color temperature as well. So how warm or cold that is. So let's just try out some of these presets. And I don't generally get on with presets to be honest. So I'm gonna go and do clean slate. And that actually looks like it's not reset. Now it's still got an element on there. If I undo, if I bypass, that, what else is on here? Image adjustment, is that doing it? No, I've only been playing with this for a few hours, so I haven't quite got my head around that, but I was hoping Clean Slate would give us an absolute clean starting point. Maybe that's coming in 20.1.1. Uh, but let's go down to custom, because I normally like to build my own. So in here, what we're gonna do is have a look at the diffusion. Oh, I need to switch it on, sorry. So I'm gonna be a bit more subtle than that. And down here you've got control of the shadow and the highlights. So let's take our shadow here. And obviously our threshold, the softness is gonna adjust the roll off of that. So you can see that happening down here on our waveform. As I increase or decrease the softness, we're adjusting the roll off there. And the same with our highlights here. And this tone lights allows us to adjust the color of this. So we can have the color of the diffusion altered just using this. 
So let's get rid of that. And what we have now is a new effect called split tone. So obviously split toning is to give us that film emulation, allowing us to sort of cool off the shadows, warm up the highlights or make them any, any temperature that you want, but it gives us that film emulation. So let's have a look at the presets. We've got natural, we've got strong, which is very strong. That's giving us a really strong warmth in the highlights. And then we've obviously got custom down here. In fact, if I go to strong, if I change the strength, yeah, that does work, okay. So if I go to custom here now, we can adjust our own shadow strength here and we can adjust the hue. So warm or cool. And again, the same with the highlights. Now this neutrals button, what this is doing is protecting our neutral. So if I put this on, you'll see, if you watch here where we've got colorization on, you'll see that this goes white. So we're protecting our whites and our blacks. So you're getting the nice split toning, but without affecting your blacks and whites. So really cool effect. And let me just show you that on a gray chart, just so you can see what's going on. Apply the split tone. There is our shadows, there's our highlights. And this, is, this point here is neutral. This is controlled by the pivot, which is here. So we can move that up and down and go to our custom. And you can indeed adjust the strength and the hue of the shadows and the highlights. These are all really great additions to the color page. So I've already got an idea what I'm gonna do with one of those new features in my next project. I'll do a more detailed episode as soon as I can. Think about subscribing if you haven't done so already. Look after yourselves, enjoy your version 20.1, and I'll see you in the next episode.